a musical theatre student and it started when I was a year and a half when I went to Chicks and Jokes with my mum. <laughs> I was on the HNC dance course at the Arden Theatre School and my journey started by attending cl evening classes of uh, ballet and contemporary in the various studios in Manchester. Uh, I'm a conductor and I've also worked as a composer and uh, a pianist uh, for theatre. So, um, and I've spent a lot of time in the West End uh, where I sort of made, got myself, you know, good things, I suppose, uh, and, and successful and got a name so that I was um, able to you know, do lots of gigs. So um, I started uh, obviously playing piano as a young boy and writing, writing musicals as I was, when I was young. Uh, then I came to London and uh, took a degree in uh, music. Uh, and composition at Trinity College of Music in London. And then, well, even before I'd finished, I was working as uh, an accompanist for London Contemporary Dance Company, um, doing a lot of work in the school, some of the company. And then when I finished my degree, I was doing a lot of work for them, and then I became one of their uh, performance pianists. So I was MDing uh, some of the ballets, I was playing some of the ballets and conducting. So that's where I started, and I was there for most, a lot of the 70s. And then um, I did some fringe shows in London uh, with small bands and um, good companies. Uh, and then uh, I got a call one day through, um, you know, through Connections, and I took uh, uh, my first job for Cameron McIntosh as um, the musical director of Godspell and the tour, the original tour. So then after that of course that they, they could see that I had certain attributes like I was a very good dance pianist and so I worked with Gillian Lynn a lot at that point in the late 70s um, and uh, did a lot of work on Cats and various other productions because um, one I could play dance classes brilliantly, uh, two I was also a very good dance arranger so I could create ballets for them and then I worked for Wayne Sleep in the 80s and wrote a show called Dash for him, which was very successful. So I've, I've always been involved in, in certainly big, my beginnings were with dance, really, and then quickly moved into theatre, which I knew I would end up doing. I'm a dance teacher in the performing arts industry, and I began my journey. I went to uh, full-time dance school, and at first I wanted to be a dancer, and then I decided after dancing for a few years professionally, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I think the highlight in my career is teaching students to a level who've gone on to big careers in the West End. Uh, there's been many highlights, learning all about the different practitioners, attending the different uh, classes, particularly Peter Grist's contemporary class, um, and exploring different theatrical processes like device. My highlight would be performing at the Royal Albert Hall. Um, I don't know. The only thing I would change is when I switched theatre schools when I was nine. I should have stayed in Ipswich and never gone to college. Okay, that's interesting. Um, highlights um, in the in 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 the seventies. My highlights were working with Merce Cunningham, Martha Graham. Um, who else did I work with? Well, of course, Bob Cohan was an absolute genius. Um, and of course, with, with the people who were then in his company, Siobhan Davies, uh, Amiga Begays, uh, Robert North, Anthony Van Last. Anthony and I have done a lot of work in the business. Um, you know, a lot of the great people in dance that I've worked with. Wayne Sleep, of course, um, uh, Gillian Lynn, uh, and, and there are a lot of others. So those are the great people I work with to begin with. Very quickly, my first West End show was a show called Tom Foolery, based on the music of Tom Lira, the, 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 the wonderful um, songwriter. And I got to know him and became a friend of his, and he was one of my top ten human beings. So that was very, that was very great to work with him. Uh, I worked with Alan J. Lerner on My Fair Lady, and of course he wrote 
all the word, those wonderful words from my fair lady. So it was great to, to know him and become a, a friend of his. So there were some really wonderful people that I've worked with in the business over the years. Um, Cleo Lane, Johnny Dankworth, um, lots of other people. Um, and the only thing, and, and I did write, I wrote a lot for Wayne because I was a strong um, dance arranger and a dance composer. So Wayne uh, Sleep trusted me with a lot of, a lot of the uh, show Dash. Um, so that was really great. Um, and also I was given a show called Why, that's one which, um, which ran at the Piccadilly for a year back in the 80s. Now those are the two big opportunities for, for writing as a composer. I think the only thing I might have done differently in my life, I came from New Zealand in 1969 to London. I was born and I grew up in, in New Zealand. Came to London and that's when I started my degree. Had I known how things would be, um, I think I would have probably stopped in New York. I would like, in a way, for the writing, I think I would have, I would have had a better, a, a bigger career as, as a composer if I'd stopped in New York, because my sensibilities as a writer are very, they have that Broadway sound, it, 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 it's, it's, I think I would have worked very well with that. Yeah, when I was, be, I was a choreographer for a piano and I had like kids that were in between five and 16, and there was this one kid that just never did what I said. And even the director, he didn't listen to the director, he didn't do anything, so in the end we kicked him out of the piano. Circumstances, I guess. Um, working with children with learning difficulties, or um, ch you know, um, I've taught I've taught a person who's had Asperger's syndrome, and it's just changing your methods of teaching. But I find that whatever you teach, which is a difficult situation, makes you. Yeah. Um, um, I've worked with a couple of people, not too many. Um, there was one singer and one dancer. And just for some reason, the chemistry wasn't there between us. And so it was, you know, the conductor is always the one they get at. So th there was a singer in a big show. Uh, these were both West End shows. And of course, in the West End, you know, it's not a family, it's just people. When you go out on a big tour, we always create a family. And the people that are chosen are generally, you know, easy people to get on with. We, we try not to send difficult people abroad <laughs> or out on a long tour. But in London, it's it's whoever. And and there was one singer and he would he would, you know, call me to his dressing room on the interval on a regular basis saying, You're not conducting what I'm singing, I'm saying you you're not singing what we rehearsed. And the same thing with the dancer also, which was very surprising because I'm a I'm a dance musician. And it 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 it, ups, it 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 irked me a lot that a dancer would think that my tempo were different. Of course, I worked. This show had had um, a drummer who knew the show very well, so and I've always deferred to him. And he was saying, "No, the beats are the same." She'd become very used to another conductor, and so when I took over, she didn't have the same rapport with me. So she would get full of angst because. I wasn't this other conductor, so th that 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 was it, it was problematic in that it, I you know at the middle of a show you don't want to hassle you know at, at halfway house or even at the end of a show you do not want a hassle so yeah. Um, on the course there have been many challenging well not many but a few challenging situations and. You, you learn to work around it and how to deal with it and how to cope with it. So in a way, it prepares you for challenges that you may face in the industry. I've experienced a lot of, um, like I've experienced a lot with performing because I was with Theatre Train for like 10 years. So I've performed in nearly all of the London theatres and I learned to respect the people that I'm working with. And just basic stage etiquette, like not talking, when you're in the wings and keeping all your costumes where they should be, <laughs> just basic things like that. And I'd say to anyone that's starting out, they need to get experience before, I think, that they should do as much as they can, like do workshops, do classes, do pantomimes, do all different genres of music, like any theatre, because not one is better than the other. Um, 
my recommendation would, would be to get as much dance skills experience as you can in all genres. Just go to um, yeah, I think the industry, it, it always improves over the years really, it changes frequently. Um, I wouldn't say there's a, a set thing out there, especially in terms of West End and stuff. There's always like a new popular show out or something and it's very diverse. When I was in New York with Martha Graham's company, I was, um, I went there with, with, with trepidation because I was young and I'd done a lot of work with Bob Cohan. Uh, but no one ever says, you know, in the business people don't always congratulate you for how good you are. They, they'll, they'll let you know if there's something wrong. So when I went there, I was quite, I was quite, you know, full of, full of, you know, trepidation. So um, the dancers were very, very lovely and they all came around at my, after my first day and they said, well, we just think you're absolutely wonderful. I said, really? They said, yeah. They said, they said uh, you don't hold anybody up. And I took, I took that quite on quite, quite seriously. So now when I talk with my students, I say to them, look, I will teach you how, how this works. And the most important thing is, don't ever hold anyone up, which means learn your lines. If you've got a scene next day or a song next day and you've got a duet or you're, you know, whatever, in a rehearsal, you learn it. You come in the next day with it completely learned because if you don't, you're going to be holding someone up. You could be holding a whole room full of people up. So, and, and it, it's take over a lifetime. I keep coming back to that one statement of people saying, what do you do? I say, don't hold anybody up. So that's, that's, that's the greatest thing I've learned in the business. Oh, the other one was, it's okay.